Hello, good day everyone. Um, today we are going to present about our oral presentation for the course language assessment. All right, so let's go straight to the point. Um, the topic that we are going to discuss today is about classroom-based assessment, yes. uh, or we call it PBD, which is mm. Pentaxioran Bilik Ganja in Malaysia. All right, so yes. uh, along this presentation, we will use PBD to present the classroom-based assessment that we are going to look into it. Mm. All right, let's get it started by telling, by having a clearer idea on what actually the PBD is. All right, um, for PBD, we can actually... <laughs> All right, PBD can actually broadly be defined that which is it is an assessment an, an assessment that includes all the activities that the teachers and the students undertake to get to gather some information, the data that is for the that is meant for the purpose of teaching and learning. Which means that the PBD can actually give a very very um, comprehensive feedback to the teachers and the students on the ongoing progress on their teaching and learning. So yes. from here, we can increase the quality of the teaching and learning performance, okay? And definitely, it will support the ongoing improvement of the students' learning. Yes. All right? So... All right. Talking about PBD, the classroom-based assessment, actually, there's a very good example that we shall look at it, which is uh, the Finnish education. Um, well, in Finnish education, it is uh, widely known that it is one of the best education system in the world. Yes. Uh, and the very prominent thing that we can see is that in Finland, there's actually no mandated standardized test there. Okay, so there yeah. is no ranking, no comparison or, comp or competition between students, students and students, between mm -hmm. schools and schools, and even between the region. Meaning that yes. all the students there receive the equal education, and they don't actually need to compare. Hey, I got an A. What do you get? Oh, you got an F. Oh, so so bad of you. No such thing in Finland. And that yes. there is one thing that there is no one size that fits all models to educate the young. Meaning that the the teacher is actually very flexible in giving yes. whatever is suitable for that particular child or children yes. for their own growth. Okay, yes. so that's what good that uh, we should learn from the Finnish education. Yes. This okay. PBD actually um actually learn our country is actually learning from Finnish yes. education. I think which, which I think is quite a good move. Mm. Mm. All right. Then after looking at the Finnish education, mm -hmm. we shall look at <laughs> we shall look at what happened in our country in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. As according to our research, PBD actually was was introduced far away in two thousand eleven. Do you know? And yeah. but it is now actually reinforced again in two thousand nineteen, which yes. is introduced by our ministry Ministry of Education, education. saying that uh, from standard. From from last year, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, what level one, level one students, which is from year one to three students, they yeah. would not take any exam yes. because the main things about their learning should be they should receive fun learning and all that as a basic as a fundament foundation for, mm -hmm. for their learning. Okay, so yes. here's where CFR comes out. <laughs> okay, so this move actually is quite similar to Singapore situation that they actually um mm, there's actually there's actually no no examination. Uh, for their primary one and two students. Okay, yeah. so this is what a very recent move in Malaysia. Mm. Okay, so basically we know about the background, the history of PBD, how PBD comes into Malaysia, and even how in Finnish Finland implement this PBD. Mm. So now we are we are going to look at what are the characteristics of PBD. So how can we call an assessment of PBD? So yes. basically for PBD. PBD is like is an assessment which encourages students to stay, to think and to curious, critical and creative. Mm. How? How? By through the activities based of uh, of assessment, which enables students to think, to be critical in solving problems, in reflecting on them and them and themselves on themselves, and to try to be creative in thinking ways to solve a kind of problem, which encourage them to think more. Yeah. And the next. Correct characteristic for PBD will be assessment for students will be done continuously as a part of the teaching and learning process. This is the prominent role of a PBD, in which means PBD is not being assessed um, after as a, as a whole as to judge a student's performance, but, but 
and co a continuous uh, process of assessing the students in mm. order to give them feedbacks for another kind of better improvement, future, yeah. future improvement. Yes, and less emphasis is on academic results, which yes. means that the yeah. they act, uh, we 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 actually focus on the process rather than the yes. rather than the product. Yeah. So and in a way, it builds and strengthens four skills. What are the four skills? Reading, writing, counting, and reasoning. So yeah. I think we are very um, we are very familiar with the first three skills, That's which are reading, time. writing, and counting. But yes. in this PPD, reasoning is also included because um, our government find found out that um, our students are really not good at reasoning. For example, <laughs> they are not good at like drawing logical conclusion. They just like follow what they are supposed to do, what they are instructed. They don't have their own thinking, you know. And yes. sometimes when we ask them about a question. Yeah, they just can't justify the decision. They just like, oh, okay, but they can't really, you know, draw the conclusion on a certain topic or a, a kind of certain decision. Yeah, and then lastly, PBD assist assist students to discover the joy of learning. So here we see that the joy of learning, and I think most of us um we don't we don't really experience that kind of joy of learning when we are in primary school. So um with the introduction of PBD. Yeah, with the introduction of PBD, it is hoped that students they can experience, they can have this joy of learning in their primary schooling life. And also through the joys of relearning, they will be gaining a language in a more natural way. Yes. They have they have fun during learning. Yeah, this is basically what it's about. Yes. And um, uh, yeah, talking about classroom-based assessment, right? But what can we do actually for this classroom-based assessment? Mm. Such as the PPD, there are many kinds of assessment or activity that can be implemented in a classroom. For example, yes. games, portfolio, group discussions, storytelling, quizzes, role play, and projects. And but in our our oral presentation, presentation, we are going to focus only on two, which is group discussions and role play, which is widely which are widely used in our Malaysian classroom so we are going to talk about how these two PPD activities can lead to a more meaningful learning which will later enhance the student's character development mm. Mm. how let's see how the role play and group discussions can lead to these two goals <laughs> mm. okay okay uh, looking at group discussion mm. All right, it actually refers to a communicative situation that allows that allows students to <laughs> communicate with each other. Okay, allows the participants to share their ideas, share their views and opinions with the rest, with their peers. Okay, and it is good that it's a systematic exchange of information mm. about a topic, about a problem, about an issue or a situation among the members, which is given by the teacher. Okay. So they are there, they are there actually discussing on a common a shared topic that they might face in their real life. Okay, so there are a few types of group discussion that the teacher has done. For example, jigsaw discussion, uh, rainbow group, or think pair share. Some of the teachers might be quite familiar of it, but some might not. All right, and what can we do actually through these kinds of group discussion? From here, we can actually see, can assess, can assess the student's participation level, see if they mm -hmm. are actively involving, participating in the group discussion, or we can see the, the we can look at the situation analysis, which the students, can they actually put themselves in the situation that they are discussing on, and also relationship management, which, because you know, right, you won't discuss with your own self, but you are discussing with others, okay? Mm -hmm. So from here, we can see how they actually manage their relationship between themselves and the other speakers okay so information information exchange of course and also their delivery skills uh if they are able to deliver their their opinion their views fluently or do they have yes. any problem this is these are what we can see we can assess through group discussion okay mm. hey Goyim, i have a question yes. here um what is meant by jigsaw discussion it is like a student each student will be given a small chunk of passage, for example, mm -hmm. like for a reading classroom, okay? So, a story, the, t the teacher will divide it into different ch small chunks, okay? So, each student will receive one, and then they study on their own, and after that, they will group again with, with uh, so-called expert groups, which means that uh, from this small group, like, for example, we are 
Yi Ming and I is, is are in one small group, and then she received part one and received part two. And for the next round is that I need to group with the other one who is re who received the part two chunks as well. So I will discuss with the rest who is taking part two, and we will mm -hmm. come up with something new. And then I will go back to this home group again to tell her about what part two is about, and she tell me the part one is about. So it's like a puzzle that you 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 complete. A puzzle oh, here, you and get, then you, you gather the information and then you combine all the information together, which means the student will have to walk around and mm -hmm. interact and try to work with other people in mm -hmm. order to gather all the information they need and then to come up with the final puzzle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a, a, a bigger picture of understanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. okay. Okay, so for group discussion, just like how we discussed about the jigsaw discussion just now, there are actually some kind of feature we can find through the group discussion and the advantages we can gain through the group discussion. So first of all, it provides the ability to think critically to better understand a subject. Just like, for example, just now we're talking about a jigsaw discussion because we are not understanding about what is a jigsaw discussion is talking about. So we discuss together and then we try to internalize the concept, the idea of a jigsaw discussion, and then we have better understanding on that subject, which is jigsaw discussion. And next, this, it provides different approaches to solve, uh, to solve a problem. For example, mm -hmm. um, activities like giving you a situation or giving you a problem that you have to discuss among your groupmates, your members, in order to solve a problem through the discussion with your groupmates, you are going, you're trying to think critically and trying to solve the problem in to get in the cooperation with all your groupmates. Mm -hmm. And then the next one would be it helps the groups in making a decision. Just now we are talking about solving problems, right? And so yeah. solving problems means generating the ideas of problem solving. And now, after you generate the ideas of solving a problem, it next leads to making a decision on yeah. the best way to solve that problem. So mm. this at this moment, we are trying to make a good and wiser decision on the problem to solve in order to solve the problem. And the mm. next one was give an opportunity to hear the opinions of other persons. So definitely, just like how we got, we are discussing about a subject, we are actually listening from uh, each one point of view, from each perspective of one and another. Mm -hmm. And then, so we are actually trying to, from through this process, we are actually trying to accept and respect others' opinions towards a problem or towards an idea or towards a concept. So from here, they are actually trying to get um, trying to listen from the other's point of view because everyone have, has their own, own perspective on one topic. And then the last one would be it enhances confidence in future speaking events. So-called group, group discussions means that we have to speak it and we have to, have to discuss among the group members. So means that you have to try to utter the things, try to describe the ideas that you want to convert to your members. So means that it's actually polishing your speaking Same skills. skills. Yes, speaking. Mm. Mm. Yimei, actually, what yes. do you think about um, meaningful learning? Yeah, that's what I am about to ask. Okay, I think, uh, <laughs> meaningful learning for me is, for me, in my opinion, I think that meaningful learning is you're able to gain a, a knowledge and then you, you are able to apply it in your daily life or daily conversation, mm. which means the things that you, you learn from your study it don't remain just on your study, but you can use it in your, you can apply it in your daily life, which means if you are having some problem, you're able to solve the problem in your study, but you're not able to apply it when the same, the problem same problem occurs. occurs in your daily life. Mm. So this is definitely no, not meaningful learning. Mm, yeah, yeah. Just like what you discussed just now, it, the problem solving and decision making is actually what makes us to see the learning the, the students learning, they actually go beyond that exam, but they can actually apply it in their real life. Yes. Mm. Yes. Okay. Um, just now we're yeah, talking, yeah. talking about uh, meaningful learning, right? So now we're going to talk about how group discussion can develop character building. Yeah. So first of all, it builds sense of responsibility. Because we know in a group discussion, just like what Yiming mentioned just now, there, there are of course more than one student in the group, right? Yeah. So they have to kind of like work together. They have to like um, have this active participation in the group discussion. So in True. if they participate actively in this um, group discussion, this can actually build a sense of responsibility among them because they need to have the responsibility as a speaker to express their own ideas, like what they think about this particular topic. Is there any other way to solve the problems and so on? So, um, 
not only that they need to voice out their opinion, they also need to respond to the peers and also give constructive feedback. So yeah, in a way, yeah, in a way they are they are actually supporting each other. They have they will sense that oh I have the responsibility. It's not that you as a leader has a responsibility. Yes, everyone, everyone as participants in the group, they have the responsibility to to carry on the group discussion. The next character is they learn to be fair. All right, they, they, they need to maintain fairness in decision making at the end of the discussion. Like they cannot, um, like I'm, I'm, I have a better, closer relationship with you, so I have to like um take your take your view as the conclusion, or uh, I stand together with you. No, they have to be fair to all of the members in the discussion. They have to really think of which decision, which choice, which option is the best in order for the discussion. So in a way, they they are actually learning how to be fair to everyone, and I think this. This character, this value is very important when they grow up, yes. right? Next, they also learn to respect respect others. So just like what Ying Ming she mentioned just now, they they mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they have to respect each other. Like okay, mm. if we are having different opinions, we have I if I'm the leader, okay, I have to really think of a polite way to how to like um reject your opinions. Mm. I have to think yes. of very you know respectful and polite way in order to tell the person that oh actually um your opinion is good is but right. actually this is not what we want maybe it's out of track or what so they have to think of the proper way the acceptable way to to tell the person if the opinion is not is not acceptable yeah which causes no offense mm. yeah. and it also cultivates caring caring personality Take care of others' feeling and emotion during the discussion. Listen and understand different points of view. So yeah, this is very important because students nowadays are uh, they just like mm, busy with their own stuff, not caring of each other. Yeah. So so um in a group discussion, students they from students from different background they are grouped together. In discussion, they can like mix around and blend together with the students or peers who they are not familiar with. So this actually cultivate caring personality within a, a person, a student. They, they will know how to like, how to take care of the emotions when maybe their opinions is being rejected or what. Yep. So these four characters, uh, yeah, will be developed, developed in through, through, through group discussion, right? Yes. With these characters, they will actually meet with them throughout their life. Okay. Yeah. Okay, the next one we'll be focusing on will be will be the role play. Yes, so I believe role play will be one of the PBD, which is a classroom based ass uh, assessment that we are popular to use it in our classroom, classroom. In our class yeah. or lesson during our practicum, right? I believe yes. every one of us did use this one. <laughs> Why we use mm. this one is because besides of besides of uh, using role play to assess how they are using the language, their speaking skill, their interactive skill. We are also looking at how they work with each other in a group because role play is a kind of speaking activity which allows the students to put themselves into an imaginary situation or, and get them to reflect on their real life. And mm, in the yes. role play, we are usually giving them a kind of situ real life situation which mm. they might encounter before and then asking them to work with their team to come up with the production production yeah, which means bring the situation into the real life and then it also means uh, to provide a non-threatening uh, drama is a kind of non-threatening drama based on activity which is an which enable them to enjoy while doing this kind of pbd assessment yes. pbd mm -hmm. and then they're using the language because they are using the yes. language that the target language that they should learn in a very non-threatening situation, situation. Mm -hmm. And also okay. for role play, it's interesting to know that every based on communicative and integrative mm. approach that we learned before. So yeah. what is communicative <laughs> approach? For communicative approach, we are actually intended to ask the student to be able to focus or emphasize on their communicating skill with people around them. And for integrative approach, we'll be focusing, focusing on the meaning and the context and the integration of more than or two or more than one skills in order to 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 use it in the real life so this role play is actually based on the communicative and integrative approach which will make them uh, to be more com com you have more competence in communicating with people from from other yeah, from other backgrounds yeah, from, from for uh different personal personality so this role play is definitely leading to meaningful learning which which what they learn throughout yeah. the preparation of role play throughout their production of role play and mm. throughout the way of performing it is yeah. actually 
based on how they think in real life and how they would react when they encounter this kind of problem or this kind of situation in real life. Mm, I think both of you we talked this before is about teamwork building, right? Yeah. So when students they are being put together in a group. They have to work out together. They can't just be selfish, like oh, you do first, later I just add on or whatever. You know, they have to be together in a maybe in a group discussion, in a role play, in a games, in a quiz, and so on. They have to be together. They can't be individualistic or what. Yeah. So this actually gives chance for them to work with people from different personalities, backgrounds, learning styles, and so on. They have to kind of like tolerate with each other and. And mix up and blend together with others in order to have a better, in order to come up with a good outcome. So this actually increases their EQ and avoid social conflicts. Um, mm, I can't say that it can avoid, but it somehow can minimize the social conflicts because they are able to 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 like to negotiate the meanings. They are able to like take care of others' feelings, and this somehow can minimize the the conflicts. Among the team members, and this is very important for them when they go out, when they when they grow up, and then they go they go to work in the career. They have to really like have this EQ. Like when you are bullied by someone, maybe your colleague, you have to really like have the you know the, the coping skill. Yeah. So all this they can learn in PBD. Yeah. And also leadership skills. It can lead students to accomplish a task by assigning roles for different purposes. For example, you are the leader. And of course, no one can be a passenger, right? No one can be a passenger, so they have to play active roles in a discussion and a role play. For example, you are the leader, maybe you are director, you are scriptwriter, you are audience. Even the audience can be very important, you know. They can give feedback to the team members, like oh, how how are they doing? How are they acting? Are they really playing the roles very well? And so on. So this actually develop their leading skills. Yeah. Okay. So let's look at how how it can build their mature thinking actually. Okay. Because from here, the the student they actually need to listen and accept uh to others' voice. Okay. Yes. So, um, I think this is quite similar to what we discussed earlier. But mm. this is, maybe this will be in another context yes. because uh this will be uh in role play, right? So yeah. don't we think that hey, it's just a performance? But actually, process. In order to produce the performance, the process it matters because it involves a lot of a lot of decision making and all that that the student need to actually to have a mature thinking. Yeah, creative they thinking cannot, as well. Yeah, yeah, true. They cannot just like uh, uh, very simply maybe they will get angry or frustrated with dealing while dealing with others. They need yes. to they need to be mature in dealing with and any circumstance that might might occur along the way in, during their preparation. Okay, yes. so this is how they actually become a better self. Uh, through this role play. Okay. Mm. Okay. The last one will be problem solving. So besides of only focusing on the situation, which enable to enable them to think of the pro of the way to solve the problem, we can also say that throughout the process of the preparation of the role play, they will definitely encounter many kind of problems in their either in their team team work or in yes. the props mm. maybe. And during this time, or maybe even during. Yeah, role play performance time. So, uh, so for the for this role play, they're actually getting the student to be able to think spontaneously in order to solve the problem instantly, without yes. without dragging or uh, affecting their role play. So they will need to be very spontaneous in dealing with problem. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so then we come to a conclusion, just to look at to to look at it as a bigger picture of the classroom. Room-based assessment that we are discussing today. All right, so we can see that Malaysia is actually trying to make a good move, a good shift. That is, we that we are actually shifting from being so exam oriented to become a meaningful and character building base of them, which we prepare the students to be to be competent in their future career. Okay, yeah. so we can see a successful learning of student is not defined by the letter grade. Okay, so. This that's why we are talking about meaningful learning and keep on mentioning about character building because these are what, what what will make them to acquire these skills that will enable them to function effectively in the society so that they can create value for themselves and also yes. in the community and even for our nation. Yes. Yes. Mm. That's all for us. Alright. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>